of different uh, countries involved. And speaking of building bridges, I welcome now Rafael Dietz with us. Hello, Rafa. He's, um, do we have Rafa with us? We are, we are, hey, hey, Rafa, we are welcome you with us. I hope you hear us now. Yes, I, am, oh, okay. I can hear you. <laughs> All right, a few words about Rafael. He is a type designer, editor, and lecturer based in Brasilia, in Brazil. Holds a BA in graphic design from the University of Brasilia and a MA. The Rafa. Rafael, sorry, you have to mute your veto. I, I have okay. mine, mine is switched off. Okay, I hope uh, now we are, we are good. No, we are not. Okay, I don't know, today we have some technical issues. I'm not sure why. Anyway, I'll, I'll just continue introducing you. I think the guys will figure it out. So, Rafael, uh, he's joining from Brazil, and um, he also holds an MA in type design from the University of Reading, and recently finished his PhD um, at the University in Brasilia. And his, uh, he has a special interest and affinity in, in indigenous languages of Brazil and did some extensive research and experiments into Brazilian wood um, for making wood type. Indeed, we have a little kind of project going. I'm very curious to see the results. And, um, well, Rafael is also partnered at uh, Esteo Grafica, a small publishing house specialized in typography and design, uh, for example, Gerhard Unger books and uh, Cyrus Heidsmith and the like, translated, of course, into Portuguese or Brazilian Portuguese. And apart from being a full-time assistant professor, he has been also designing identities, uh, publications, album covers. So definitely one question is, what's your favorite band, if you have one? That's a, that's a tough question. Yeah, I know, uh, I know. It's the, it's the bad one. It's uh, like when you ask a type designer what's their favorite typeface, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, many stuff like the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, you know. Okay, the, that's cool. This, and <laughs> James Brown and all the groovy, funky stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay, super. That's great. So today, though, you will enlighten us um, uh, well, and give us some insights in the Brazilian indigenous languages and um, typography, orthography. So movie, movie go, and we'll hear you afterwards. Hi, my name is Rafael Ditch. I am a type designer and typographer based in Brasilia, Brazil. Today I will talk about my research uh, on the typography of Brazilian indigenous languages. First, I would like to show some facts about Brazil. Uh, Brazil is the largest country in Latin America and Portuguese is, is the official language in this country. Not only the official language, but the most spoken language, by far. However, the census of 2010 uh, documents around 270 indigenous languages spoken in the country. Uh, most of these uh, indigenous languages are endangered given the low number of speakers. 
The orthographies of Brazilian indigenous languages make use of accented characters that are unusual or even absent in most of the digital typefaces available today. When I say unusual, I want to show you this, or this, or this. Okay. Uh, now, I would like to talk a bit about the key ideas of my doctor research, or important uh, stuff. First, uh, this research tries to build uh, a framework for developments on the typography of Brazilian indigenous languages. It also uh, tries to uh, provide guidelines for the development of writing technologies. With writing technologies, I want to buy writing technologies, I want to uh, refer to uh, mostly digital fonts and uh, keyboard layouts and also uh, to provide technical reference for, pub, uh, for public policies. Uh, the main developments of this thesis uh, in turn, I mean the, the, the main products that came out of this research are the, the orthographic cataloging and the development of digital tools such as typefaces and keyboard layouts. To develop this, uh, the orthographic cataloging and uh, the, the keyboard layouts and, and digital uh, fonts, I had to start my project with uh, with a data collection. It was like a massive uh, amount of work, and it's based mostly on the analysis of primary sources. It is also the foundation for the orthographic cataloging and for everything else. Uh, it's important to mention this reference, John Hudson. Uh, for the Brew project, uh, this is one of this is, is one slide uh, he shared on on his website uh, with a presentation about the Brew project uh, for the Brew for the Brew publishing house in the Netherlands. Uh, he was he wanted to show that his process in this case started. Uh, with a massive spreadsheet uh, documenting every character he could find in the publications and uh, of 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 this company. Uh, this is very differently. Uh, th sorry, this is very different from uh, many type design projects that start with nice sketches and sketchbooks and drawings and everything else. And I must say that there is a lot in common uh, with, uh, I found like a lot in common with my project when I, when I saw this document by John. In this regard, uh, my process starts with the analysis of publications like this. I look uh, letter by letter, line by line, page by page, searching for the, the diacritics used for a given language. For example, this is the Ikpeng language, this publication. After that, I made a, a, a spreadsheet with four columns uh, that are the this is the minimum data you need. I, I, I would say that it's recommendable to, to document this, uh, this four columns, which there are. Uh, the code point, the Unicode code point, the glyph names, the, the actual representation of the character, 
in the Unicode block on which this uh, this character can can be found. Uh, I represented the blocks, the Unicode blocks, the last columns, the last column by 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 numbers. There is a table that says, for example, number two is basic Latin, number eight is Latin extended something. Uh, and after that, I noticed uh, that filling out these spreadsheets manually, even even using copy paste, uh, would take too much time. Wouldn't be feasible. So I asked my friend uh, Gustavo Soares, who is very keen on scripting on Adobe InDesign, so he made this very nice script. He called it's like a diacritics counter. It works like this: you open a blank uh, document on InDesign, and uh, you type every character you find in a book. For example, so it makes a list of all the characters uh, you find in a book. When you run the script, it automatically generates this uh, plain text document containing all the characters uh, you, all the characters you you typed uh, in the in the document, no matter if you typed it twice, uh, if you typed it, it will show up like uh, in the in this in this spreadsheet. Also, uh, for each uh, document, I used. Uh, I, I created an entry on, on Zotero, which is the references manager, uh, so that I could track, for example, if if there is a book in the, this language, which is a Pinaget, and there is something uh, in dispute, for example, uh, someone says that this language doesn't use like uh, uh, the G with a tilde, so I can go back at my source, for example, this book, uh, and see if it really happens, and if it doesn't happen, uh, it's like a mistake. Where is the mistake? I can track this. I can even uh, in some cases, uh, talk to the to the author of the book. So it's in the end all all uh, this uh, uh, these spreadsheets containing the the basic data of 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 a single publication were merged with the entry in Zotero. So you have two things. Uh, uh, everything it's it's compiled in a single uh, spreadsheet. But because of the pandemic, uh, it was hard to to have access to primary sources in libraries, uh, and most of the primary sources I had access. Uh, in the in the year of 2020 especially it was the year that I did more research on on primary sources uh, these were mostly uh, digital versions of actual printed printed books that I found on websites and libraries and everything else so I decided to launch this uh, online survey so that uh, linguists and educators could, com uh, could contribute with my research. 
and it was nice that I had more than 100 entries and more than 30 new languages that I didn't have any information uh, about. In the end, uh, I had a very large volume of information like 239 spreadsheets, 111 languages. Uh, and I had to classify this this data. So I decided to, to separate these languages in three groups uh, based on the character sets used by each language. Uh, the first group, uh, the first and the second group use exclusively precomposed characters and the group three uh, contains characters formed by more than one code point or, or. in other words it needs uh, it, it, it needs to be composed by the principle the Unicode principle of dynamic composition and it needs combining marks so it uses not only precomposed characters but also uh, characters that cannot, uh, that, uh, roughly speaking, characters that don't have a co co code point. Uh, so, and this is the result of the orthographic cataloging, uh, like a list, uh, so like some, some lists of languages. So you have the first one, uh, which is the group one comprising 27 languages. Uh, the three letters in, in brackets uh, in the beginning of each line is the ISO code for language, for language names. So uh, this is useful for, for ling linguistic documentation, for uh, uh, also for for metadata purposes in software or uh, operational systems and other systems. So the group one comprises 27 languages in, and it's mostly the, the, the basic Latin character sets. Uh, the basic, not the basic Latin, the Latin one character set. Uh, most, I would say that more than 90% of the Western European keyboards or even all the European keyboards will cover this, uh, this set. So it's quite easy, most of the keyboards, Brazilian, American, French, Spanish, uh, especially in, in, my, uh, in my context, which is in Brazil, Brazilian and, and U.S. International ISO uh, will be covered by this. Uh, it it is easy to cover. Most typefaces have all these accents. Oh. The group two is the is the largest one, uh, and it comprises fifty languages, and. There are some special characters that are used in in, in this uh, in this group that are not that easy to find. For example, the I with the tilde, the E with the tilde, Y with the tilde, uh, the G with the stroke, and some of these. Uh, phonetic characters uh, I mean some some of these characters like the the I with the stroke I and U with the stroke these ones are the from the phonetic characters so not many fonts to be honest only a few fonts will have these characters and the last one uh, is the group that used the, the, the what some people call the uh, non-assigned characters, uh, Unicode characters, or characters without a code point. This is not exactly true. 
this this is just uh, a, another way of building uh, characters like you, you don't have like a many of these characters for example the G with the tilde it doesn't have like a, a code point as a precomposed form uh, but it has uh, it can be composed by the combination of two uh, code points the G and the combining tilde and there it goes the same happens with uh, the, the stacking diacritics and everything else uh, I will show here it is a lot to to cover but I will try to to show some design development guidelines uh, some key uh, I can't, there's no time to show everything, so I'll try to show some interesting stuff. For example, uh, many languages uh, use this character I uh, with a tilde, I with a circumflex, and I with a macron. So it's recommended to make like a shorter version. Uh, I mean uh, a narrower version of of this wider diacritics uh, if you are typesetting in, in languages that use these characters. Uh, this is a proposition I saw back in 2011-12 uh, by Carolina Giovanoli, which is an, an Argentinian type designer. Uh, she made this for her typeface Andada, which is distributed by by Google. Also, uh, it is recommended if you are typesetting with uh, stacking diacritics uh, that you make like uh, 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 sorry that you make like a flatter. Uh, versions of the accents uh, so that it, 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 it will accommodate over the letter more easily. Uh, and also if you are uh, making uh, I you can even make like a shorter and narrower version of the accents for the stacking diacritics of the letter I. Naturally, uh, this is like it, this is uh, this will work for some designs. This will not work for some designs, but it's just like a, a framework, like some guidelines, something that can be considered, especially uh, if you are working with Brazilian indigenous languages. Also, uh, something that is recommended is to use uh, anchors, not only in the letters, but also in the, in the accents. Uh, if, you, if you do like this, like positioning the anchors in all the vowels, uh, and in the letter I and U, one anchor in the middle, you you will cover a lot of the the incidences uh, of diacritics in Brazilian indigenous languages. So you have here the anchors for uh, the, the the vowels and for the basic accents. I would say that these are the most some very common. Uh, there are some missing, like the diuresis, but mo the most common ones are these that you can see there. <laughs> also, it's interesting to notice that some letters, uh, the, the postscript name, the, 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 the character name of this letter is the G stroke, uh, and there is not like a, a standard form for this letter. It is used in only one one language uh, that is uh, Kadiwell, uh, 
but I this came up while we were developing. So so you have different ways of attaching the this bar, this stroke uh, with the letter G. Yeah. Also, forgive me for this. I will. Also, you will see that uh, this letter, the, the, the uppercase U uh, and the, upper ca uh, the lowercase the lowercase U with the bar is on the phonetic uh, 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 on the phonetic block of Unicode. The same with the I uh, stroke. Uh, these two uh, have there is something interesting with these two letters is that uh, you cannot uh, uh, the U stroke both upper and lower keys and the I stroke both upper uh, and lower keys they cannot be decomposed uh, in other words there is not uh, uh, a canonical decomposition uh, documented by Unicode for these two characters and for the G stroke as well. Uh, so you have some issues while m using combining marks and keyboards with these letters. Uh, by the way, uh, these, uh, these typefaces you are seeing here is Brasilica, the typeface I started designing back when I was a student at the Masters uh, in typeface design at the University of Reading. Uh, these were, I had the help of Calapi, which he, he was my colleague and he's very, was very keen on developing all the open type features and for for these things to work. Uh, I would like also to show some uh, issues with keyboards. Uh, I developed keyboards for two uh, main situations. First, the ISO uh, International uh, Keyboard which is, I think it's one of the most used keyboard layouts in the world. Uh, you can see that the only keys with actual accents or diacritics are uh, the ones in blue. But if you get the A, B and T, which A, B and T stands for the Brazilian Technical Norms Association, you will see the diuresis over the let the number six, and you will see two uh, keys uh, that that are uh, specially assigned for uh, for accents. Uh, there you can see the difference. Uh, naturally, because in Portuguese uh, you use all these accents all the time. So, uh, there is this... Uh, I, I, I developed some uh, keyboard layouts, uh, but uh, the idea of, of developing the keyboard layouts was to, to maintain all the original positions of of the keys. For example, this Houston A B N T. Uh, it has the the two uh, letters uh, U and I with a stroke, uh, and also three other diacritics that were uh, that are not common in this keyboard, which is the letter X. Uh, that can be accessed with Alt X or Alt V or Alt B. It, the X and the V are the macrons, uh, low macron and macron, and the Alt B is for the 
for the the the, the low tilde. So these positions of the low marker and low tilde are the same for all keyboard layouts for both for Windows and Mac OS. All the rest is the same. So if you have a custom if you have an ABNT keyboard, you just add something on top of it. Lastly, I would like to, to show some develops, developments on fonts. Uh, the, they were all customized with the help of Kalapi Gajar Bodaweka, which is sorry for not pronouncing your name correctly, man. I'm really sorry for this. But you live, uh, you live in my heart. Uh, this is, uh, without your help, I wouldn't uh, be able to to finish this like uh, I like it like it was let's say so uh, we chose to to work with two uh, uh, open source typefaces one is Chivo and the other is Faustina both from the Omnibus type foundry of, uh, of Argentina so Calapi uh, and I uh, we worked together uh, on the on positioning the, the diacritics correctly uh, and making sure all the, the all the characters for Brazilian languages were covered both in Faustina and Chivo. Uh, some of these still need a bit of uh, fine-tuning but the, the character the character set is complete that that is the most important and also you can see some sample text in some Brazilian indigenous languages that I will show yeah. and I would like to thank you all for listening to me Forgive me uh, for my rusty English. I would like to thank you all. That's it. Goodbye. Myself, and that is about the adoption uh, of your work, of your typefaces in the indigenous communities. So have you, what, what's the reaction? What kind of experience do you have? Well, uh, actually, can you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have time to uh, to make public this project uh, yet, so I still have to to make. Uh, the, there is there is a sketch of it on on GitHub. Like I need to make a proper repository for for distributing all this. Uh, all these typefaces and keyboard layouts, and and I hope it works. Uh, I, I I've been uh, trying to talking a lot with uh, some key linguists. They are they are also working on on like on public policies to to make sure that this these products these tools are getting to the communities. So this is the next step of the of the project. So I needed to to conclude my thesis that I did in, in late August uh, to make sure everything was uh, like the, the framework is built. Now we need to, to make this public. Okay, that's that's great. So we look forward to that, and I guess um, it will be also part of some some kind of guide, no, uh, for yeah, the type designers. <laughs> Manuals and everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. I think we have a very short one-minute um, little video of the, the the keyboard layout, no, so we can play that. Nice.
well, mostly uh, I, I did I did different keyboard layouts for for pre-composed marks and for combining marks. This one that you are seeing is the one uh, developed for the combining marks. Uh, and uh, if you can you can see that you can mostly do anything else any, anything you want as long as your typeface has uh, the correct uh, characters the combining marks the anchors on everything uh, then it's possible to to typeset uh, with this I can say that we can typeset anything uh, from the from the cataloging uh, of course we have ex uh, special keyboards for some languages that that are very complex uh, but uh... okay thank you so it's a definitely fascinating project and uh, well we look out for it on the github one little uh, reminder to you all, please, to fill in our form. I know everybody hates forms, but it's really just two minutes, you know? And perhaps uh, one of you will actually get a typeface out of it. So on the, um, where do we have it? Uh, feedback and ruffle on the conversations. You can, you can see the link, or also I posted in the chat the... Thank you.